Church family, my name is Emmanuel, and we just want to fill you in on some information before we get started. As you know, we are now having services on Sunday in church, and for now, Wednesdays will still be online. We hope you enjoyed today's service and want to give you a quick tips on how you can still worship God through giving. Here are the ways you can still give. The first way is online at covelifechurch.org. You can still give in person by coming to our church office between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. Lastly, you can send your tithe through mail at P.O. Box 2650, Corona, California, 92878. As a reminder, a couple ways you can get here is through the links on Facebook, Instagram, or website at covelifechurch.org. We want to thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to tell your friends and family about our online services. Let's go ahead and get started with our praise and worship. He's got a plan for me. When the voice is in vain, trying to take my heart away, left bruised and broken, with nothing left to say. He hears his children, he speaks in life again. And I remember who I am I'm waiting on the Lord I'm trusting in His Word He's got a plan, He's got a plan for me It's not time to give up just yet There's more that's still ahead He's got a plan, he's got a plan for me. I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm trusting in his word. He's got a plan, he's got a plan for me. It's not time to give up just yet, there's more that's still ahead. He's got a plan. He's got a plan for me. He's got a plan for me. He thought me. He thought me. He knew me before I ever took him. He made me. He called me. He gives me purpose. He thought me, he knew me before I ever took a breath. He made me, he called me, he gives me purpose. He thought me, he knew me before I ever took a breath. He made me, he called me, he gives me purpose. I'm waiting on the Lord I'm trusting in His Word He's got a plan He's got a plan for me It's not time to give up just yet There's more that's still ahead He's got a plan He's got a plan for me 
He's got a plan, He's got a plan for me. I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm trusting in His word. He's got a plan, He's got a plan for me. It's not time to give up just yet. There's more that's still ahead. He's got a plan. He's got a plan for me. Good evening, Covenant Lines, and welcome to Wednesday Night Refuel. We're excited to be able to share a message from God into our hearts, into our lives. So let's open up in prayer and ask the Lord's blessing upon all that will take place today. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the holy name of Jesus, and we're going to partake of your living word, Father. May you take this word today. May it become milk to the milk drinker and bread to the bread eater and meat to the meat eater. Thank you, Lord, that you know how to adjust this message just to where I live, to where we live. In advance, Lord, we'll give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' holy name, amen. If you would please open your Bibles to two spots today, two scriptures. The first one we're going to read is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 3. And then I would like to go to the book of Philippians. The apostle Paul writing to the church at Philippi in the second chapter, looking at 12, verses 12 and 13. Let's go ahead and get into Hebrews 11, 3. Notice the very interesting words that it uses. It says that through faith we understand. If we could just stop right there. You see, faith helps us to understand. It says through faith we understand that the worlds came into being and still exist at the command of God. So that, the, so that what we see, what is seen, does not owe its existence to that which is visible. In other words, the spirit world and the spiritual world made the physical realm, and through faith, we're able to understand that. And the second is found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 13. And it reads like this, My dear friends, you have always obeyed God when I was with you. It is even more important that you obey now while I am away from you. Keep on working to complete your salvation with fear and trembling because God is working in you, notice, to help you want to do and be able to do what pleases him. He wants to help you want to do and be able to do what pleases him. You know, here we are. We are on the uh, very beginning, first week or so of, of January. And let me tell you, I want to share a message with you entitled today, It Takes More Faith to Run to God Than to Run Away from God. It takes more faith to run to God than to run away from God. You know, we're in the beginning of, of 2021. Wow, 2021. And here we are on, on the very first Wednesday, I believe, might be the second, but the very beginning of the week at least, okay, of 2021. And uh, this year, Listen, I'd love, to, I'd love this to happen in the body of Christ, and I think you would too. This year, no one running away from God. No one running away from God. You know, this year, no wasted time in staying away from God and staying away from the things of the Lord and staying away from the house of God and staying away with fe a fellowship with God because of guilt and shame and condemnation. You know, any person can run away from God after they sin. And, and, and the thing is, many do. Sin comes in, in, into our lives. Sin comes into our lives and we sin. We 
as the Bible says, we miss the mark. And that's what sin is. The scripture uh, uh, view of sin is to miss the mark. In fact, the word sin means to miss the mark. It paints a picture of somebody shooting a target. And you know what? You missed the bullseye. Or you went outside the target. You missed. And uh, people run away from God when they miss it. Many do. And uh, we all do still miss the mark. And there is an option, and there are options that we have when we miss the mark. It is running away from God or running to God. You know, the enemy wants to convince us that if we run away from God or that we run to God, that somehow we are wimps. He'll say things like this, so you're running back to God. What a big wimp. Why don't you take it? like a man why don't you take it like a woman why don't you go ahead and take your medicine and take your consequence and 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 quit running like a baby back to god when in reality the opposite is true it's the wimps that run away because running back to god when we have sin or running to god to help us with sin issues, it takes faith. It takes faith. In many cases, or in some cases, it takes great faith to run to the Lord. Let me share with you my four points today. Here they are. Number one, there is a, the fear path designed to cause me to run away from God. I could go down that path. But there's another path. There is the, the faith path designed to help me run to God. And then number three, I want to look at God is not giving a license to sin. And number four, God is giving us an opportunity to work out my salvation. Let's look at number one. The fear path designed to cause me to run from God. You know, uh, there's actually a combination of things that have to come together in order for me to get on the fear path and run away from the Lord. Let me tell you something. This is a brand new year. Listen, we all miss the mark. We all sin and come short of the glory to God. But this year, in 2021, listen to me. It, 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 we we got to determine that nothing and, noth and no one is going to move us away from the solid foundation, the rock Christ Jesus. And here we are in life. Here we are in daily life. And in daily life, at least for me, it's daily. You know, in daily life, I miss the mark. Thing hap things happen. But you know what? In, in the middle of that situation, I'm not going to run from God. I'm not going to break fellowship with God. I'm going to run to the Lord, stay in fellowship with the Lord. Let the days add up of staying in fellowship with the Lord and watching what God will do for us, for me, for you, for the body in 2000. 21. Different things have to add up in order to run away from God. Let me give you a few in, the, in, in a list that goes like this. Number one, after I, after I miss the mark, after I sin, I have to give you reasons, illustrations. Come on, you know what they are. We're tempted every day. We, we do the right thing every day. And for some of us, we don't always do the right thing every day. And you know, we, we miss the mark. But that's not going to drive me from God. The enemy wants to drive me from God. God wants, God has provided a solution, an answer through the atonement of Jesus Christ that I can run to Him and not lose time of days or weeks or months out of fellowship, out of fellowship with my own family, out of fellowship with God, out of fellowship with my own church family, because number one, guilt comes to us from our rebellion. Guilt comes to us for our, from our rebellion. Notice the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22. So the first one on the list is guilt. Hebrews 10 and 22, it reads like this. Let us go right into the presence of God, with sincere hearts, fully trusting Him for our guilty conscience. Now, 
here it gives us a scripture, and I'm so blessed with the Word of God. You know, when it talks, when the Word of God talks about the negative things, most of the time it talks about the negative things in a positive way that God has actually made provision for that thing. And right here it's talking about, I wanted to just share with you that our consciences do get guilty. And a guilty conscience comes to us. And conscience, uh, a guilt comes to us from our rebellion. And says, let us go into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting Him for our guilty conscience. It actually gives you a solution to the guilty conscience. But I just want to share with you that our consciences are bombarded with guilt. But it says, for our guilty conscience has been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed in pure water. And so first of all, after we go ahead and miss the mark, the first thing that wants to attack us is guilt. After we miss the mark, the second thing that wants to attack us is the accuser of the brethren. That's what we call the enemy. That's what the scripture calls the enemy as our minds get bombarded. The accuser of the brethren. That's what he's called in Revelation chapter 12 and 10. The accuser of the brethren. And he goes ahead and, and, and he's the one that's the tempter also, by the way. He's the one that goes ahead and pressures and brings pressure to our minds and brings pressure and says to us, do it. Do it. It's okay. Do it. And then We've gone ahead and done it. And that same individual says, Now you did it! Now you did it! The accuser of the brethren. He goes ahead and accuses me to God, according to Revelation chapter 12 and 10. He goes ahead and accuses me to me. And then he goes ahead and accuses others to me. You know what? I blew it. I know I did. I missed the mark. I know I did. I sinned. I know I did. You know what? It's their fault. They're the ones that were not there for me. They're the ones that didn't undergird me. They're the And you know what? Uh, the accuser of the brethren is just doing his work. He's going to go ahead and accuse me to God. He's going to go ahead and accuse me to me. And then he's going to go ahead and accuse others to me. Book of Revelation chapter 10, 12 and verse 10. Excuse me. It says, and then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of the brethren. Notice, uh, who accuses them before God day and night has been cast down. First of all, as we go ahead and miss the mark, we're attacked by guilt. And then the accuser of the brethren starts accusing us to ourselves that we're the worst person, that now we did it, and, and we've gone ahead and broke fellowship with God. Then what happens after that? Then it opens the door to condemnation. It goes something like this. Boy, you now you've done it, and now God doesn't want to have anything to do with you. You, you. you burned your bridges. You've gone too far. To some people, he's tried to convince you committed the unpardonable sin. You've gone too far. Let me take a moment to share with you about that. Let me tell you something. If you run to God and you have a desire to run to God, you've not committed the unpardonable sin. If you're looking for repentance, God is ready to help you and forgive you and wash you and cleanse you. Many times the enemy wants to tell people through condemnation that you've committed the unpardonable sin. God won't take you back. There's absolutely no path back to God, which is a total false and complete lie. And if the enemy has been bombarding your mind that God won't take you back, that you've burned your bridges, that there's no way to come back home to the living God, and there's no way to ever restore what you once had with the Lord before, I'm here to tell you, according to the authority of God's Word, that is a complete lie. Condemnation, interestingly enough, when the scripture speaks to us about the negative things like guilt and condemnation, most of the time it speaks to us about it in a positive light. Let me, give you what I, let me tell you what I mean. Because the gospel is 
good news. See if you can catch the condemnation in a good light. Watch this. The Gospel of John chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. You know the account. A woman has been caught in the, uh, in the midst of adultery. She's brought to Jesus. The, 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 the people want her stone. They all pick up rocks. And then they say to Jesus, what do you say? And he says, he that is without sin, cast the first stone. And everybody began to drop their stones. And we pick it up in its context in verse 10 of the Gospel of John chapter 8. And when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, because they all had left, saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Does God have a sense of humor? Come on. Does Jesus have a sense of humor? He looks around and he says, Hey, woman, what happened to all your accusers? Where are your accusers? And then he goes on to add, Has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. Notice, has no one condemned you? It speaks about condemnation here. But it speaks about condemnation that God is able to help us in it. God is able to help us with it. And God was able to help this woman with hers. Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. Then he goes on to say to her, neither do I. I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Talking about the fact that when the Bible talks about negative things like guilt, like shame, like condemnation, it gives us a positive light because it is the good news. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. It talks, talks to us about condemnation. It says, if you come under the covering of the Lord, if you come under the salvation of God, if you come under the blood of Jesus, for you, there's no condemnation that can stick to you. No condemnation. And then, of course, let me read you one more. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 17, again, bringing up condemnation, but bringing it in the light of a positive thing about it because the gospel is good news. God is always wanting to refresh us and bless us and give us good news. Here's what it says. God did not send, John, Gospel of John 3, 17. God did not send his son into the world, notice, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Absolutely. But, but let me tell you a truth. Let me tell you a truth. Sin does bring condemnation. The Bible speaks to us about that, but speaks to us mainly about the remedy to, of condemnation. So we see that our, our sin, first of all, goes ahead and brings guilt. And then it goes ahead and brings the accuser of the brethren accusing us to ourselves, to others, to God. And then comes condemnation. And I believe that these here are combined, equal, moving in fear and running away from God. These things combined, if we're combining these things and these things are sticking to us and we're yielding to these things, it equals me if I yield to these things going on the path of fear. And my decision will be, catch you later. See you later, Lord. You won't see me around no more. Hey, I'm doing my own thing. I'm running away. I'm getting away. You won't see me in church. I don't want to be there. And God, you probably don't want me there is the belief. This is the path that, that moves, that goes to moving in fear and running away from God. Go with me to Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. Through 11. See if you can catch these things in this account. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7 and 11. It reads like this. Then the eyes of both of them, talking about our forefathers, Adam and Eve. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
And Adam and his wife hid themselves. They ran away from God. In their time of need, they didn't call out to God and run to God. In the time of their need, something happened. Guilt came along. And then the accuser of the brethren came along. We know the accuser of the brethren came along because we see these words. Let's, let's look at it. Uh, then the Lord called out and said, Adam, Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. Notice, he said, because I was naked and I hid myself. And he asked him the question, who told you you were naked? Implying somebody told you. You know what? The guilt came. After the guilt came, came the accuser of the brethren and said, you awful ugly, naked thing. Look at you. You've ruined the path to God. You ruined your road back to the Lord. The Lord rejects you now. He doesn't want you. Don't ever go back to him. And he begins to hide himself. And here comes God looking for the ones that sinned. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you? that you should not eat. This is the path of fear. And the path of fear is designed to go ahead and cause us to run away from the Lord. And then there is another path. This is the path that we're believing. Come on, as a body together and everyone watching us today, we're believing it's the path that you're going to take in 2021. There's no running away from the Lord. Yes, we miss the mark. Yes, we sin. Yes, we fall short. Welcome to the human race. But here's what we're going to do when we do. We're going to run to the Lord. We're going to run to the Lord and we're going to have a great year and we're going to have a great January and all the way through June and things happen. But We're going to run to the Lord. We're going to have a great September and we're going to run to the Lord in the midst of our situations and we're going to close out the year in victory. 2020, W-O-N, 2021. Because we're going to walk on the, the faith path that God has designed for us to run to Him. And likewise, there's different things that have to add up for us to run to to God. A foundation has to be laid in our lives and our thinking and in our hearts in order to run to God in our time of need. And of course, it's going to have to be by faith. Now, you say, why, why is that has to be? <laughs> because you're going to need faith to overcome the guilt through God's word. You're going to need the faith to overcome the accuser or the brethren because you're not feeling it right now through, through the accuse, accusations. And then, of course, it's going to take faith to override the feelings of condemnation when everything says, you know what, I think God is through with you. I think you blew it too bad this time. Walk away, you know. Reminds me of, of I won't go. Reminds me of Scar. Run away, Simba. Run away far. It's over for you. And he takes off. And he splits because he ain't coming back because he knows he's totally blown it. Another story, another story. Okay, here we go. In order to go ahead, let me give you a list of things that we're going to have to go ahead and lay a foundation for. And faith is going to have to uh, uh, be operating in these things. After we sin, listen to me, we have to understand after we sin, you're going to have to know this. God comes looking for you. He hasn't rejected you. He hasn't thrown you in the trash bin. God actually comes looking for you. The man and the woman in the garden, they went ahead and sinned and obeyed the serpent and committed high treason and gave him all authority upon the face of the earth. The 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 calls him the small g, little God of this world. But in the middle of all that, here comes God. He comes into the garden looking for him, looking for them. He cries out in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9. Then the Lord God called out to Adam, 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 where are you? God comes looking 
for the sinning one. He'd just come looking for him, and, you know, after he found him, he's just like, oh, you blew it, I know you blew it, we're through. If you look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, you see something happen further. Not only did God go looking for them, but God did something in order for his part, in order for them to be reconciled again. Here's the way it goes. The soul that sins must die. But God came up with a plan that the soul that sins that dies, but if he can get something else to die for him, then all of a sudden his sin was not cleansed at the Old Testament, but his sin was covered. And we know that God performed the first sacrifice of killing a lamb or some lambs in order to cover their sin so fellowship could be restored. Because in verse 21 of Genesis 3, it reads, Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God make tunics of skin and clothe them. Now, how did God get tunics of skin? Did he just make them come out of the air? You know, here's some, I'm making some tunics of skin, you know. No, he went ahead and sacrificed some animals. Then from the sacrifice of those animals, he took the skins and made clothes for them. Oh, the mercy of God. Oh, the goodness and the kindness and the grace of the Almighty God. You say, Pastor, but I've done this a thousand times. If you come and ask for forgiveness on the thousandth time, God will forgive you and wash you and cleanse you. You say, Pastor, after a thousand times, I might have worn so many people out. And you're absolutely right about that. But God is not human. Numbers 23 and 19 reads, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, he, as has he said, will he not do? Or has he spoken? And will he not make good? He is the almighty God. I'm not encouraging you to do anything a thousand times. But I'm telling you, if you've done something a thousand times, God is not human. You cannot wear out the God of the universe. In fact, if you're going to play games and do things 3,000 times, I got news for you, you won't wear out the God of the universe, but you might wear yourself out. You might wear yourself out. So let's not go there. So we have to lay a foundation. The first foundation is, is that after we sin, an understanding that after we sin, the Lord comes looking for us. Number two, we could say, or another truth that has to add up, and that is that the Lord is forever faithful to his written word. These are the things we're going to have to know, that when we sin, God comes looking for us, that God is forever faithful to his word. Psalms 119 and 89. You know what that means? That means the Bible doesn't change. That means if he said it in the Bible, he'll do it again and again and again and again and again and again because he is forever faithful to the things he has said, the things that are written in our word. Here's what it says. Psalms 119 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Let me give you another one briefly as, uh, <clears throat> as we go on here. Matthew 24 and 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And then we're going to have to know by faith, listen to me, that his love is more real than the things that we feel. And number four, briefly as we move on, his forgiveness is more real than the things that we feel, the guilt, the shame, the accusations, the condemnations. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All these combined, listen to me, is getting ourselves on the path of moving and faith 
when we have this foundation, no matter what goes on, we're going to run to God. We're going to run to God. In other words, if it's in the Bible, it's for me. If God said it, it can be relied on. Believing God is the requirement. <clears throat> Let me go into number three. As we go into number three, again, the enemy wants to remind you that if you run to God, you're a wimp. That if you run to God, that you're just weak. If you're one to God, then you know what? You're not manning up and womaning up. But here's the truth. If you run to God, you're a strong person. If you run to God, you're a believing person. When we miss it, if we run to God, we're a faith person. If we miss it, we run to God. We are a trusting in God's word person. Number three, God is not giving us anyone a license to sin. And we aren't today. We're not talking to you today about, go ahead and just sin, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, just run to God. Don't. God's not giving a license to sin, but here's the truth. People don't need one to sin. <laughs> they don't need one to sin. You know, I was a pretty good sinner before I came to Jesus, and nobody ever gave me a license, you know, and don't look at me like that. So were you, you know, and uh, let me go because of time. I'm going to have to go to my last one. Number four. What actually is happening is God is giving me an opportunity to work out my salvation. Let me tell you something. The Lord wants me in this sin thing. The Lord wants me to figure this thing out. He wants me to figure my loves out. The Lord wants me to settle some things in my heart. And here's what happens. The Lord wants me to obey. He wants me to learn to obey out of love. And not just duty. Look at 1 John 5 and 3. And it reads like this. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. If we're looking at what God is asking us as burdensome. As harsh. As oppressive. As tough. As trying. We really are missing the picture. We really are. And, and, and there's a process in which we work out our salvation. And it goes something like this. God, through his word or spirit, tells me his way. But you know what? I end up doing it my way. And my way usually falls fast and hard. And then the thought comes, I should have done it God's way. And then another time, God will tell me through his word or his spirit, he's telling me to go into his path and his way. This time, I listen to his path. I get on his path. But in order to do that path, I have to walk by faith. He sees me through successfully and safe. And then I start to begin to think, that did me good. I begin to love his way. And it's a developing process of working out my salvation. And God wants me to get to the point. Listen to me. God wants us to get to the point where we look at his commandments as good. And we delight in his commandments. And what are we doing? We're changing, we're developing, we're working out our salvation. In Psalms 119, 47 and 48, how I delight in your commands, how I love them. I honor and love your commandments. I meditate on your decrees. Psalms 119 and 27, truly, I love your commands more than gold, even the finest gold. We're coming into, or we are into 2021 on this first week. It would be a wonderful year. Listen to me. Nobody, none of us running from God. No wasted time and staying away under the guilt and the shame and the condemnation. Any person can run away from God under sin, and many do. But there's an option when we sin. We can run to God. We can go ahead and, and come to the cleansing flood of Jesus, 
For there's a sinner, the saying says, there's a river that flows from Emmanuel's veins that sinners that plunge beneath lose all their guilty stains. And as we run to God, let me remind you, you're not a wimp. You're not weak. It takes a strong person to get on that road of faith that lays a foundation that we can run to God. 2021, we're not going to lose anybody in Jesus' name. We lose nobody in 2021 because we lay a foundation and as we miss the mark, we're going to run to God, not from God. Let me pray with you today. Maybe you're here today and say, Pastor, I'm listening to you today, but I've actually kind of trying to sneak in because I'm not really in fellowship with God. Condemnation, guilt, the accuser, all these things have contributed to me running away. Let me lead you in a prayer to come back home. In the beginning of the year, in 2021. In Jesus' name, we're claiming we're losing nobody in 2021 to sin, guilt, shame, and condemnation because as we miss the mark, we're going to run to the Lord. Let me lead you in a prayer of running to the Lord. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' holy name. I choose to believe your word that you came, died, rose from the dead. Your word tells me if I confess my sin, you're faithful to forgive me. I choose to step out in faith to trust your word, trust your love, and to come back into full fellowship in the first week of 2021. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And amen. Listen, if you don't have a Bible, we want to bless you with one. If you want to contact our website, you and I need the Word of God to hear it, to listen to it. Thank you for tuning in today. Let me remind you that we're on Sunday, we're in church on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We are having a wonderful time delighting ourselves in the Lord. Our prayer for, I want to pray for people fighting symptoms today. If you're at home fighting symptoms, listen, the scripture tells us that there's no distance in the spirit. And in other words, as we pray with you today, it's as if we're praying with you right where you're at. You know, there was somebody in my neighborhood that I saw them outside and they were in their front yard and I was walking toward them and they said to me, stop, pastor, stop, you know. And they said, I'm fighting COVID, but I'm outside. Stop. And so I stayed a little distance from him. He, you know, that's what he asked me to do. And I said to him, I'm going to pray with you at this distance away from you. I'm going to pray with you. And in the spirit, it's going to be as if I'm laying hands on you. I'm going to pray for you that are watching us. And in the, same, in the same way in the spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are they are fighting COVID. I pray for those, Lord, that are in pain today. I pray for those that are fighting symptoms, Lord. I pray for those that have gotten a bad report. Put your hand on where your pain is. And in the name of Jesus, Father, we lay hands on them. In the name of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may your anointing flow and your virtue flow into their body, affecting a cure from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today on Wednesday Night Refuel. On behalf of Pastor Sandy and myself, I want to remind you to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. God bless you. We'll see you guys soon.
Again, thank you for logging in with us today, and we hope you can join us this Sunday in church at 10 a.m. for Sunday morning service. We pray that you have a blessed week, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.